ion molecules. Fine. So now what is this biomolecules? Okay, biomolecules means nothing but carbon compounds. And this carbon compounds are mainly found where? In the leaving tissues. Okay, so basically we know that CHO, that is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, plus some other molecules are also there. So they all together make up what? Biomolecules. Bio means leaving and then the molecules. Okay, so we already know that, uh, for example, if suppose a leaving tissue is being burned, what happens to it? Finally, what is released in the uh, air is the CO2, right? As well as water vapor, that is H2O. So basically, biomolecules is nothing but the all the carbon compounds, which we are going to get from a leaving organism or a leaving tissue, that is called as what? Biomolecules. So this is further divided according to how much they are present or how much it's required, that is small and large. Okay, so small, which is there, it will be having a very simple structure. Whereas if it's large, they will be having what? Little complex structures. Okay, so small is also termed as micro molecules. And here it will be macro molecules. So first, let's see about the micromolecules. Okay, that is bio-micromolecules. So here in the name itself, it's their micromolecules. So hence, their first characteristics will be what? Low molecular weight. Thus, because they are low molecular weight, they will be easily soluble. So, hence they are highly soluble and they will be having a simple structure, simple molecular structure. Okay, so this particular bio, uh, micromolecules will include what? Lipids, then uh, amino acids. Okay, nucleotides and sugars. Okay, so this all comes under what? The micromolecules. So first, let's see the carbohydrates or the sugars. Carbohydrates. So we all know carbohydrates is nothing but if we take in, we get the energy. So basically, they are also called as saccharides, means sugars, because they are made up of sugars. Okay, so if you take a cell, in, in a cell, approximately 3% of that particular total cell will be made up of what? Carbohydrates. So the basic composition is C, H and O, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Okay, so this particular carbon forms which are there, they are binded together with maybe rings or chains. Okay, along with this three molecules. Fine, so any of the carbon forms you're taking, whether it's in a chain structure or whether it's in a ring, closed ring structure, they will be having what? More than two OH groups. with one aldehyde and one ketone. Okay, so one aldehyde and one ketone, CHO, C double bond O. So if you take any carbohydrates, either of the one of this group will be present over there. So this aldehydes and ketones also can be termed as what? Aldos and ketos. The basic formula of this carbohydrate is what CN, H2NON. So this formula, you have to know that this is the basic thing. 
Okay, that's why, like if I ask you glucose, glucose means what? C6H2N? O6. So like that, CN, H2N, ON. Okay, this is what the basic formula for the carbohydrates or the general formula for the carbohydrates. So if you take whatever examples are there, according to them, whatever the um, this particular thing is there, that is the formula that you can change and write. Okay, so initially, whatever the carbohydrates are there, according to how many sugars are present in them, they are divided or they are classified into three types. Okay, so carbohydrates, they are classified mainly into three types. So monosaccharide, mono saccharide, oligosaccharide and polysaccharide. Okay, so what is this mono, oligo and polysaccharide? Very simple. Mono means 1, oligo means 8 to 10 and poly means more than 10. Okay, so saccharides means sugar. So depending upon how many sugar units are present in them, this names have been given. So if you take the uh, polysaccharides, again, because there are many sugar chains present, so in this we have again classification such as disaccharide, okay, trisaccharide, tetrasaccharide, and further it goes on like this only. Okay, so here the example of disaccharide is sucrose, maltose and lactose. Tri means three will be present. So the example is raffinose and tetra means four. So stachios. So these are what the major three types of polysaccharide which are present. So already I told you that two groups are there that is aldehyde and ketone. So depending upon the sugars contain a haldehyde group or a ketonic group, there are again further two types of sugar depending upon which functional group they have. That is reducing and non-reducing. So if it's a reducing sugar, it will be having what? Free aldehyde or a ketone group. So, in reducing sugars, what will happen is their aldehyde or ketone group will be free. Okay, so they will be having an ability to reduce cupric ions. Cupric ions. Which is present in a solution called as Benedict or Felling's solution. Okay, so reducing sugars, they are able to reduce this particular Benedict's or Felling solution. So hence, we can, by using these two tests, we can predict whether they are reducing sugars or non-reducing sugars. So if it's a non-reducing, what will happen? They will not have a free aldehyde or ketonic group. So don't have free CHO or C double bond group. So hence, these non-reducing sugar will not reduce the cupric ions, correct? So they will not react only in that Benedict's or Felling solution. So it will be negative. So here, don't reduce or doesn't reduce Okay, the solutions. So they are non-reducing. So a, a very good example of the reducing sugar is the lactose. Okay, which is also called as milk sugar. Whereas for the non-reducing sugar, it's sucrose. That is your normal table sugar. So lactose is also called as milk sugar because it's present highly in milk. Whereas lactose, it's a cane sugar. Okay, normal sugar, what we take, the table sugar. That is called as what? Sucrose it has mainly. Fine. So these are what? The two types on the basis of whether they are having a free aldehyde and ketonic group or not. Fine. So this is all about the 
carbohydrates. Next, second component which we have is the fats or the lipids. Okay, so lipids means nothing but the esters of fatty acid and alcohol. So around 2% of the cell will be what? Lipids. So depending upon the complexity, we have again the classifications of lipids as classification. Okay, so in this, the first one which we have is the simple. Okay, then second is the uh, compound. And third, derived. Okay, so these are what? The three types of lipids. Fine, so simple means what? Simple means uh, like we can take the example of wax. Okay, wax can be an example over here. Or neutral fats. Okay, compound means those which are present in the cells. Okay, like for example, phospholipids. Okay, lipoproteins. Glycoproteins like that. Or uh, sorry, glycolipids. Okay, and derived means what? Oils or hard fats. These are what? The derived lipids. Okay, so this is all depending upon the structure or what they contain. Okay, depending upon that, we have grouped these uh, fatty acids or the lipids, you can say. So now what is the difference in this fatty acids and lipids? Okay, see, fatty acids means nothing but they are the fatty acids. Okay, they are nothing but water insoluble, long chain hydrocarbons. Okay, long chain in the sense minimum 4 to 36 carbon atoms will be present in them. So, hence they are the insoluble. So, they will not be soluble in water. They are a long chain and they will be having what? One carboxyl that is C double bond O. C double O H carboxyl group. And they are considered as the simplest constituent of the lipids. Okay, so depending upon how long the fatty acid chains are, uh, they are of two types. Okay, that is the first one, which we see it as saturated. And the second one is unsaturated. Okay, so what is this saturated and unsaturated? So saturated means they will not have any double bond. If you see their basic general formula, it will be CN. H2NON. Whereas for the unsaturated, it is CNH2N minus 2XO2. Okay, this is what the general formula. Whereas the basic difference is what on the basis of whether they have a double bond or no. So saturated fatty acids means what they will not have any double bonds in their hydrocarbon chains. Okay, so the first difference you can say over here is what? They do not have double bond in their hydrocarbon chain. So because they don't have a double bond, they will be solid at room temperature. Plus, they will be having a very high melting point. And some of the examples that we can take over here is lauric acid, 
palmitic acid okay all this are long chains like if you take lauric acid it will be having 12 carbons okay if you take palmitic it will be having 16 carbons in its chain then if you take stearic acid it will be having 18 okay so by 2 2 carbons like that it goes on increasing whereas if you come to the saturated exact opposite of the uh, sorry if you come to the unsaturated it will be the exact opposite of the saturated so over here they will be possessing what one or more double bonds in their structure. So, hence they will be liquid at room temperature. <clears throat> Plus, they have a low <clears throat> melting point. So, for example, you can take over here is um, olic acid. <clears throat> 18 carbon structure then linoleic acid again 18 carbon structure okay so these are all about what the difference between saturated and unsaturated then the next one which is the next carbon uh, compound, which is the amino acid. Amino 